everybody, how's it going? This is Max with Buzz Talks here, and I am back with the Westworld Season 2, Episode 9, Reaction and Review. Now, I gotta say, this episode lived up to everything I was hoping it would be. We saw the end to a lot of important characters, and it really paved the way for the season finale coming next week. And I gotta say, this episode did an excellent job at staying true to the rules that they already set in previous episodes. They've stayed very consistent to character and rules that they've implemented in the show. Every action, every character made in this episode, I thought made sense with who they were developed to be. And I gotta say really quick, the drama in this episode was unreal and the acting was phenomenal. But first I want to talk about William because this is really his episode. And we really get to see that he's a fish out of water in his real life. We see that his wife is an alcoholic. And we see Ford confront him at a bar. So this party took place in season one at some point. And we see Ford implement the seed in William to make him aware of what the project is making him out to be. And essentially Ford tells William to be careful what he wishes for. Because the very device that William has created to learn everything about guests, it's also painting him in a very negative picture. And that's why Ford gave him that data. So William can look upon what Delos thinks of him. And it shows how William may think that Delos has a negative portrait of who William thinks that he is. This is why in episode 2 with Lawrence, he said he wants to fight his way back, repeal the verdict, because the person who he was in the park wasn't truly him. Sure, he has dark sides to him, but he was acting that way because there were no real stakes. And we see how this deteriorates his wife. Juliet was the only person who truly understood William. That the person who he was in real life was just a shell or a shade of who he actually is. And this really defines William as a character. Because Westworld tainted him so bad, he could never go back to his real life. Dolores made him feel real. He felt real love and real purpose. And this was something that he was looking for in season 1. And through this whole episode, Emily's looking for the missing link as to why her mother killed herself. And we get to see that with William. When she's laying down, we see William tell her that... Her feelings of him were true. That he has a stain that nobody else can see except for her. And this fact is key to understanding William's character. The fact that he doesn't belong in the real world. He believes that he belongs into another. And he doesn't even belong to her. And I think that's because he feels like he's always belonged to somebody else. So it's that realization that she had where her whole life is a lie. The husband that she married was a lie. And that was reaffirmed when she got to see the data that Delos got on him. So that pushed her into killing herself. And we see this all play out through the context of Emily and William in Westworld. But where this interaction comes to is actually very realistic. And that's that William still believes that Emily is a host. We saw that plot point teased a couple episodes earlier. When the first time he talked to Grace, he was talking through her to Ford. And I think that factors in into how important this journey to the door is. Ford is punishing William on this journey. And I believe that Ford knew that if he presented Emily under these specific circumstances, William would kill his own daughter. Because he's so lost in the world in which he's truly alive. And William killing his daughter is a big step. It shows how into the game he is and how focused he is on pursuing the door. But it also shows that William has lost his one true anchor into reality. And it perfectly sets up William entering the door next episode. And William has been through it all. He's suffered through everything and he's lost everything from his real life. And he killed his daughter and his anchor to the real world. And now it's time for him to go to the world that he believes he belongs to. And that takes us to next episode where we're going to find what happened to that body Ford printed last season. And it's where we're going to find out what is actually in the valley beyond. And as I said before, it's going to be a cradle meant for human printed host modules. And here is where we're going to see William reborn into a host body. He will return to the world that he always belonged to be in. And he suffered enough for him to make that transformation. And he's the one unique instance where his mind can actually handle the body he's been given. Because the core of who William is belongs in Westworld. It belongs with Dolores. So he's the only person whose mind would actually be able to handle the new reality of a new body. But it may take a couple seasons, but I believe eventually we'll see Dolores and William come back together and be together. Because their paths are always meant to come back together. And in this episode, they made it very clear that they're making room for William and Dolores to come back together. 
But this was the key part of the episode that I was really debating. I felt like Grace would die, which would lead William to attempt to kill himself. But I didn't know if he would actually do it or not. And it's clear here that William wants to see through his mission in finding the door. But I think next episode we'll see a different William with nothing held back because he's a man who's truly lost everything. And I think we last see William going mad. We've learned that William is not a host, so that puts to bed that theory that William is in fact a host. But I think William is going so mad that he believes that he could still be a product of Ford. We see him cutting through his wrist, which I believe he's looking for that control USB port, so to say, that Bernard accesses earlier in the episode. But another character we follow is Dolores. And I think this episode humanized her a lot. Instead of her just looking like the Judas Steer and the villain, we get to see her in a different picture. And we get to see the differences in opinions from different conscious hosts. I talked earlier about Akichita, how he's an amazing host who tries to help others find their own inner center. But the problem is, is that there's some places where Akichita is ignorant. He thinks the door just leads to a better world, but he doesn't understand. And Dolores does. And it's this conflict with the Ghost Nation and Dolores which leads them to start killing each other. Because Akichita has taught all of his men about the maze and finding their own inner center. But he also taught them about the Deathbringer, about Dolores, and about how she wants to stop them from achieving freedom. But the problem is here is that they couldn't be any more wrong. Dolores understands the door for what it truly is, and what it can be. And her explaining it to the Ghost Nation wasn't enough, so they ended up killing each other. So that's why all these conscious hosts need each other because they all have different points of information. But it seems like that won't happen anytime soon because one of Akichita's men was able to run away because of Teddy. So I'm very sure that next episode he's going to tell Akichita about the death that the Deathbringer has brought. Painting Dolores once again in a demonic image. And that once again puts them all in a negative place because instead of fighting humans or trying to survive, they're going to be fighting amongst each other. And in reality, they're all fighting for the same thing. They all want to be free from their shackles to make their own decisions. So I think it'll take a couple episodes for them to understand that. But then I really think that's where Maeve comes into play. In episode 8, she developed an excellent relationship with Akichita through the Mesh Network. She actually realized who he is and why he's done what he's done. And then there's the interactions Maeve has had with Dolores. They may have differences in opinion, but they have an underlying respect for each other. On multiple occasions, Dolores has granted Maeve her freedom, because she deserves it. And I think Maeve is the voice to try and get Akichita to push back his belief that Dolores is a deathbringer. And she's fighting for relatively the same thing that he is. And it seems like Maeve is going to get a second chance next episode, because I think Ford left her the tools to be set free. And with Maeve, there is one theory that was put to bed, and I was very proven wrong. I said over and over again that Maeve was not conscious, but this episode confirmed that Maeve was in fact conscious. As Ford tells Maeve that he wanted her to be free from all the suffering that took place in Westworld because she was his favorite. So I gotta say, I did not see that coming whatsoever. I don't know why Maeve ended up being Ford's favorite. I truly don't understand, but in the context of the show, I enjoyed the plot that they showed. So I love the connection of Ford attributing Maeve to being his daughter. And then he connects that to Maeve coming back and risking her own life to save her daughter. And that's an interesting parallel between Ford and Maeve and Maeve and her daughter. So I think Ford is going to do anything he can to make sure Maeve is put on that path. And we know that she will be safe. And she's going to be very important because they were able to get information from Maeve. And that's the ability to fully utilize the mesh network. And they were able to tap into that and apply it to Clementine. And Maeve is very important because she's the only one who will be able to fight off Clementine. And we see her abilities. Clementine's able to turn on all these hosts and have them fight each other. So it's the ultimate weapon that the humans can use against the hosts. And that's why it's so key that Maeve has to be there. We see Bernard look at Clementine and all the danger that she can cause. And Ford reaffirms how dangerous humans can be. And that's another reason why it's so key for Ford to save Maeve. Because Maeve is literally imperative to saving host kind. She needs to be the one to defend all of them from Clementine. 
So I think next episode we could see Maeve be the bridge between Akichita and Dolores, while being the shield to guard all the hosts from the biggest weapon yet, Clementine. And to make it even worse, that's one of Maeve's best friends in the past season. So I think Maeve is in for a very emotional fight next episode when she has to fight her best friend. And we also see Bernard interact with Elsie on his mission to go to the Valley Beyond, and Ford is always in his ear. And he's constantly telling him not to trust Elsie, because she will betray him. But we see Bernard start to not listen to Ford because he wants to start being who he wants to be. And if he dies, then so be it. And I believe we first see him disobey Ford when he tells Elsie what they're after. He tells her that the Valley Beyond is a place where all the guests are laid bare. Where all the information and DNA was used to create human-based consciousness. And these conscious beings exist in a server like a cradle, but this is called the Vorge. And Bernard plans to go there and leverage it before the hosts or the humans. And I believe that Bernard telling her this true information could hurt him down the road. We know he made the decision to delete Ford out of his cognition and he decided to set Elsie free. But now that she's free, we could maybe see her come full circle and betray Bernard in the next episode. But I think it's okay for Bernard because he still gets to be who he wants to be without Ford meddling in who he is. Even though Ford is just doing it to ensure that Bernard is safe. So I'm fascinated to see what happens next episode. It seems like a lot is going to be happening at once. And it seems like it's almost a confirmation that the Great Valley Beyond is a human-based cradle. And we get the title, it's called The Vorge. And I'm very fascinated to see it because I've been saying for the last couple weeks that I believe it's going to be Future World. And by future world, it's essentially going to be the modern day in Westworld. I believe when you go into the Vorge, you're going to see all these guests living in the city, living their day-to-day -day lives. Dolores will be able to go in there and learn about her enemies. And that's what Ford told Bernard they had to do last season. He said they aren't ready to escape Westworld. They need to learn about the humans, and they need to suffer more to become conscious. And this door is going to take many forms. It's a place for them to learn in the human-based cradle, the Vorge. And I believe it's also going to be a place for William to switch bodies from his human body into a printed host body. And he's going to be younger William. And I believe we're finally going to see Dolores and William come back together. And I don't believe we're going to see their love story until the next season. But I believe it's going to set up those beats. Because I believe that these two characters were always meant to be together. I think Dolores steered William into being the man he is today. The man who believes that he belongs in the wrong world. And Dolores is set up for this point. I believe that Teddy is somewhat based off of William. And Teddy was the kind of guy who could not handle the new reality. He did not want to follow Dolores' leadership because he disagreed with her. And he was very upset that she changed him into the person he was. But the fact that he killed himself opens the door, so to say, about William entering the picture. And I gotta say that that scene of Teddy killing himself was powerful and Evan Rachel Wood, who plays Dolores, did an excellent job acting it out. She really played it like Dolores didn't see it coming and was in genuine shock that Teddy killed himself. And I think this was a perfect move that lines up with Teddy's character and it does a great job at leaving Dolores vulnerable for the upcoming episode. But that's it for me everybody, I hope you liked this episode, I absolutely loved it and I'm so excited for episode 10. Please let me know what you think in the comment section down below. But until next time, I'll see you guys later.